I'm here now to debunk uh, Christianity in less than a minute. Gee, I wonder if any theologians have addressed this issue over the course of our 2,000 year history. Jesus teaches in the Gospel of John that the only true God is the Father. If the only true God is the Father, then Jesus cannot be God. So if you think this verse is a problem for the Trinity, it shows you have not studied the sacred doctrine of the Trinity. The doctrine of the Trinity was developed by building on what scripture taught, and coherent models of the Trinity recognize the headship or monarchy of the Father. If we just look at the form of Trinitarianism that I hold to, which is monarchical Trinitarianism, it states that there are three entities within the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Spirit, each of whom share one divine nature and thus are equally termed God. The one God in the nominal sense is numerically identical to one of the entities, the Father, who is the sole ultimate source of the Son and the Spirit. According to monarchical Trinitarianism, the Father is the sole ultimate unsourced source of everything else and thus possesses a specific priority within the Trinity and reality as a whole. In other words, in line with John 17.3, the Father is the only person that possesses a saity and is the ultimate source of the Son and the Spirit. The Son and the Spirit are eternally generated by the Father, but they are still of the same substance, so they are God in a predicative sense. But their source is the Father, making him the only true God, being that he is the only person that possesses a saity. Dr. Joshua Sijawati even uses verses like John 17.3 and John 20.17 to support his model of monarchical Trinitarianism. And this concept seems to have been taught in the early church, as John Zazilus said, among the Greek fathers, the unity of God, the one God, and the ontological principle, or cause, of the being in life of God does not consist in the one substance of God, but in the hypostasis, that is, the person of the Father. The one God is not the one substance, but the Father, who is the cause, both of the generation of the Son and the procession of the Spirit. And of course, if anti-Trinitarians would read just past verse 3, they would see Jesus also said, And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. Confirming that Jesus pre-existed his birth and had some special glory with the Father. Craig Keener says, If any ambiguity remains concerning Jesus' identity in 17.3, it vanishes in 17.5, which affirms Jesus' pre-existence with the Father in glory. Jesus is not paralleled here primarily with Moses, but with God's own revelation, presumably with wisdom and Torah in early Jewish thought. So John 17.3 does not debunk the Trinity or Christianity. The context actually shows it confirms the Trinitarian doctrine of Christianity. If you're going to make the bold claim that you can debunk the Trinity in less than a minute, you better make sure you actually do your research.